Today we are going to be doing some step notches on the Blue Goose, my 58 Apache. If you're new here, we just rescued this thing out of the field about a month ago. We are in the current process right now of putting air ride on it. We just in the last video finished up our four link, so today we are going to put, hopefully, get these old notches that I built ages ago sectioned down, fitting on this frame rail, and have that thing laying low. Let's go. Corny jokes are over. So I built these things originally for my 64C10 back whenever I was just going to do like a normal build. Kind of like what this is turning out to be, just factory frame and everything. But I cut everything off, back half that truck is spiraled out of control. I'm trying not to do that with this truck. So what I'm planning to do is utilize these. Now these are 3x3 three three square tubing, which I particularly do not like. So I think what our game plan is, I'm going to scribe us a line up here all the way i'm going to cut these things down and basically section them to match our frame width on our actual truck here and then once doing that we can start cutting these things in and hopefully get them pretty dang close to where this thing will be able to lay out and we'll be rolling so our frame rails are going to be roughly i'm going to say two and a quarter make sure we're the same on both ends here and it appears we are and like i said this is actually three and a half by three and a half. I thought it was the three by three, but it's kind of an odd piece of square tubing. So we'll need to knock just a little bit out of this. We're just gonna slide up through here, cut this off, and then we'll come back in here and cut that joint there, get them back together, and weld them out. Had my old cheap Timu plasma cutter. Check this thing out. <laughs> I already had to rip the finger guard off of it. I couldn't take it anymore. All right, now we just need to come in here real quick, cut this lip off, and then we'll be ready to go. So here is what we got. What we need to do now is just lay some beads down around our perimeter here. And then we will have a piece of two and a quarter tubing to go into our frame notch. All right, finished product. Hit that thing with a little 80 grit. It is not perfect. It could be blended a lot more than what I've got it in metal finished out. And we may do that when we finally paint the chassis and everything like that. Because after we get this thing all mocked up, we're probably going to blow it all back apart and start painting. So now that we got that thing basically where it's going to be as far as that two and a quarter, we need to snip in there, get that thing set down in here i think this little cross brace behind me is definitely going to have to be removed because it is right in line with where the back of that notch is going to be sitting we need to snip that out we still got another notch to do yes i could have probably just got some two by four from the loft cut that but those things have been sitting out there for three years so i just wanted to use them up and it's free to me everything's already done just trying to stay kind of low buck on the back of this thing So I've got both of our notches done here and just kind of got them mocked up. I got this piece of tubing running through here. 
because that's going to utilize where I want the bottom of our notch so I can just kind of set them on there. Then we're going to scribe our lines to make our frame cuts here and then we can slide them notches back in there. Now these notches unfortunately are not going to go all the way down to the bottom. My game plan is what I'm going to do. I'll go ahead and box these in the rest of the way and tie into the bottom of that. We'll also make some fish plates that goes and kind of just ties into this hose section here and it'll all be really boxed in and super strong. So with that being said, I need to get some measurements pulled. The reason I'm doing the notches to this height, I measured to the bottom of the cab, and it's eight inches. I'm gonna roughly give ourselves nine inches in our notch, just in case we ever wanna come down a little bit lower in the rear and have the front up a little bit, cause you will need to have your notch to be just a little bit lower. All right, now that we got everything tacked into place, our next thing is gonna be cutting out the frame here so our axle can come on up. And before I did that, I wanted to get something connected, these two notches, because we cut that cross member out back there so I didn't want the frame to try to go in on itself. And I lucked out, I actually found this piece back here and it is pretty much perfect length. And I can assure you, I didn't cut that at all, so just found it over there in my scrap pile. That's why you keep everything, literally everything. So I'm gonna clean these ends up here on this and also clean those notches up and then that'll allow me to get the good tack on there and then hopefully we can start cutting these things out and then we can start kind of boxing this thing in hopefully. So our next line of attack is going to be getting this middle section right here out, allowing our axle to travel up past the factory frame rail. What I've done is I put us kind of a guide here. We're going to come in with a sawzall and just ride right up alongside of that and cut through the frame. everything hacked out of our way and this thing is laying out now it's not going to lay fully out right now because the back is or the front is still up pretty good but as you can see back here this is a lot lower than we're even going to be able to go because the bed hangs down quite a bit past our actual frame rails and our actual frame rails are pretty dang close to laying out all in all pretty happy i just mocked these wheels up got a little chisel there holding them in place but these tires are actually way taller than what we're going to be running i think they're close to a 30 inch to a 31 inch tall tire which is going to be way bigger than what i calculated this suspension out for we're going to run about a 28 like i've got on the 64 over there all in all i am tickled to death with that that looks killer now tomorrow i'll come back out here and hopefully We'll box these things in or at least start. I don't know if I'll start boxing the front end because 
right here this cross member as you can tell it's not going to work out because as you can see our pinion is way above it so our drive shaft is going to be way above it too i might just hold off on boxing these in on this video we'll go ahead and tackle the back though but the front here we're going to probably have to do a little up and over job just so we can get over that drive shaft and then we'll probably just tie all that in together making it a lot stronger all right i just got through digging through our little scrap bin there i found these two pieces of three inch by six inch it's a quarter inch and what we're going to do with these is we're going to slide them right here and that'll just cap that frame off because we got a little bit of an opening down there and everything like i was telling you put that on there weld that all in and then when we do that we'll come in with another little plate here and box all this in All right, so we got that all capped off. We'll come in here later on. We'll blend all that in right there, make it all look real good. But I've got a pretty cool idea, I think, here. So this is our section here we cut out of our frame rail. And instead of letting it go to waste, which I'm just trying to, like I was saying, use as much crap as I got just laying around, I think I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna flip it over where it used to be the other way but I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna cut this basically right where it starts humping up. So we'll put it in the bandsaw over there, we'll cut it, and then we'll come in here with that piece and that angle should be just about perfect and we'll just start kind of coping that thing in and we'll weld it in here and then that way we'll just box in this whole section and we can meet up with our plate down here and we'll just box all that in and then we can just Put a cap here in the back and it'll tie that whole thing together i think we can do the exact same thing up front with this section i don't know i'm just trying things um this truck i really just want it to be a driver so i'm not going crazy with this thing trying to make everything new nice and just you know over the top i just want to drive the heck out of this thing and keep it as low buck as i can that's what i'm going to do i'm going to use some of the old frame rail it's not rusted out and rotted out so might as well. Alrighty, so we got that all glued in. I think it came out really good. I think that that plate we welded in saved a ton of time by not having to cut, bend, break, and just calculate all them angles. It was just a little bit of grinding and cutting that thing out, but saved a lot of time. Got the driver's side done. Need to do the passenger side still yet, and also the fronts, but I'm gonna hold off on the front for now because I've got a cross brace that I'm going to be putting in there and I don't I don't know exactly how all that's going to play out so I'm just going to hit the brakes on that because I don't want to get ahead of myself and have to change something. With that being said that's probably going to wrap this one up because I need to get a video out for you guys because I missed last week and full transparency that might actually be a reoccurring thing unfortunately. I'm working 70 hours this week and scheduled to be probably doing that for a good bit so I don't know. I'm going to try to keep pumping a video out every single week, but if I don't, please bear with me. I'm trying, I promise. <laughs> but the truck is coming along great. I think it's going to be awesome, and I cannot wait to show you guys what is coming for that front end. I know I've said that in other videos if you've been here before. It's going to be cool, trust me. We are going to be moving on hopefully next week to a cantilever style bag setup. I've never done that, so I'm going to have to start doing my research and get that figured out. 
but that's about the only way that we can do that because this rear end actually sits kind of offset inside the car like this axle tube over here is a lot shorter than this axle tube I could get a bag on top fine on this side but it would really be tight right here because it's so much closer to this notch. So that's why I'm gonna try to do the cantilever style setup to kind of get that bag up forward and we don't have to worry about being so cramped over the notches. Next week, we're gonna be heading to the Evil Shindig in Evansville, Indiana. If you haven't been down there, I highly recommend trying to check that out next weekend. We're gonna be camping out in the camper van three days down there so that'll be a video i drop as well and it'll just, always just a great time that is plenty of rambling for you to sit through and i appreciate you sitting through this far but if you haven't hit the subscribe button it means a lot to me and maybe even like the video and a little comment get out and work on something i'll see you on the next one and have a good one